Hello, hello, hello. Nemo Ashong here. And for the first time, I am, I am, what is, what's the word I want to say? I am graced with the presence of someone sitting right next to me. We have Vicky Vaswani, who is here, and we're going to have an amazing conversation today. Vicky, it's wonderful to have you and in, get a chance to introduce you to the Outliers, Pioneers, and Mavericks today. Thank you, Nemo. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so glad and honored to be with you in your presence, of course, and to share a little bit about myself and my story to your community. Yeah. Well, come on in here. Like, I feel like this is the, this is the place where I want us to be able to play. I want us to be able to, you're here because I see you as an outlier. I see you as a pioneer. I see you as a maverick. We've had a lot of conversations that have just been really meaningful. Um, and I think that your journey and what you stand for and the things that you work towards are things that honestly a lot of us that, that listen to this and that, that watch it are part of this community also think through. So I'm very excited for this year. Um, for everyone that's that's a part of this conversation, this is our first time doing things in with video, the first mm -hmm. time doing it in this way. So yep. um, we're just going to go with it and know that the conversation is more important than anything else that might happen. I'm saying that more for myself so that I don't get <laughs> all up in my head. Uh, and instead we can just focus on having a really quality conversation that's focused on service. All right? Sounds good to me. Cool. So Vicky, I'm going to take this moment here. I'm going to turn to you and actually just introduce you into the room a little bit. All right. It's great seeing you right here. I'm glad. I'm so thrilled that we're doing this here. Vicky, who you are to me, is a person who knows what you're about, who chooses goals that for most people would scare or intimidate them and still finds a way time after time after time to set enough space and set enough time in order for you to know that it's an accomplishable goal. And what I love about you is that you don't compromise on what your goals are. You don't make your goals any smaller. You're willing to take the small steps along the way to make it come to life, but you don't start by shrinking that goal. Instead, you, you hold it out and it's in complete integrity and you bring all of you to the problem and to the possibility that makes that a reality. When I think about you and I think about our time, when I think about what got me excited for talking to you today, I know you to be one who has purpose and also balance and harmony in your life. You're someone who has done well uh, business-wise in a number of different arenas. You contribute and you help others. You're, you are willing to be so much more than just yourself on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your family, and of those who are impacted by you. And I know that it brings me great joy, great pride to be able to have this conversation with you here in this community. So with that here, I really like to just make sure that I, I connect with like, why are we here? Why am I choosing to have this conversation with you? I need you to know this here, coming into this conversation. I've let people know about you in terms of how I see you and, and what, what you invoke with me. Uh, I would love to, for you to share a little bit about yourself, um, your bio, things like that. Let, let, let's give people a chance to get to know who you are. Um, before I say anything about me, I think Nemo, something about you. I realized from our numerous conversations that you are one of the best uh, give us of compliments that I've actually ever met in my life. And if I could have a 45 minute sessions of you just complimenting me, I think that would really uh, bring up my already very high self esteem to another level. Mm -hmm. But then we can have that for another time, <laughs> not for today, for sure. <laughs> but then uh, a little bit about me, I just turned uh, 30 not so long ago. And that was something which I was really looking forward to because uh, why was I looking forward to turning 30? Well, that's because it's meaningful. It's been a meaningful 30 years. And I do have a really crazy goal, which I like to call uh, G-O-A-L, which is a go on and love goal, which is I want to be live, I want to live till the age of 100. So I've still got a good 70 more years to go. And I know some of you may be wondering what's the whole point of living till 100. But I think for me, it's all about uh, being out there, being the best version of myself and basically living my life to its purpose and a full hundred years, a century of it would be something which I would really, which I would really enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well now, now you've gotten me a little bit interested here. <laughs> All right. Um, let's like, just 
just because I like to play the curiosity game. And then we're going to go into a little bit about how the two of us know each other and then see what would really serve you. But sure. um, if you just had to just go off really quickly with some of the things that in living that best life and living mm -hmm. out like that hundred years here, mm -hmm. what are like, let's say your top five or five things that come to mind of like, yeah, I would love to have done this before the end of those hundred years. I would have loved to gone to Machu Picchu. That's one of the things on my travel list as well. Mm -hmm. I love taking cruises. So I would love to take a world cruise all around. I mean, a good a month, two months just on a cruise and getting off the cruise. And a lot of it is spending time with people that matter to me, spending time with people that I care about. And I'll, uh, a lot of it is just about being in the moment and having fun and not thinking about even though I'm thinking about technically uh, living till 100, but I know that every single second right now, because tomorrow anytime can happen, because I mean, I'm, I'm from the uh, insurance industry, so I talk about death, I talk about illnesses, disability all the time, every single day, so I, I know that anything can happen at any time, but I am glad that I live every second to its fullest, and maybe that's why I want to live till 100, because I want to live every second to its fullest, all the way till 100. <laughs> okay. Well, I like that a lot. And so let's make sure in our conversation here, forever long it goes, every single second we're living that out to the fullest. Right? Perfect. Awesome. So why don't we share a little bit here um, about like how, like where you were in your journey when the, when the two of us first met. So mm -hmm. take, us, take us to that. I love to, uh, you do a lot of great things in the world. I love to make mm -hmm. sure we, we introduce some of that here. And at the same time, what we do is, yes, we will share your outer journey, the, the external mm -hmm. successes that, that you've done and that others can see. And we'll also give ourselves a chance to explore it through the lens of what's happening internally as well. Mm -hmm. So why don't you take us a little bit to when we first, what, what brought us both into each other's worlds and we'll take it from there. And it was actually a who that brought us both into our world and that was actually my best friend, uh, Jared Nair, and he was, He's somebody who's dear to me. He's known me for close to 10 years now. And he, when Jared says you have to meet anybody, I make sure that I meet that somebody. And that somebody turned out to be you. And that at that point of time in my life, I was uh, 29. And, yeah, it was 29 turning into turning to 30. And I was having, uh, I was living a good life. I was living, uh, I would say, a better than normal life. Coming back to the reference, we'll come back to that later. But somehow I felt that because it, it was getting hard balancing too many things on my plate there were too many things on my on my plate and as much as i like to balance stuff but i feel that i was it was being i was being putting disproportionate amount of energy mm -hmm. the roi that i was getting from the energy that i was expending was not up was not something which i was enjoying and at the same time was having a little bit of uh things a little bit of uh, interesting things going on in my relationships as well so the five main areas of my life which is the health wealth relationships personal development and spirituality that's the five main areas which i do a monthly review on so everything was going good but somehow the next level was what was missing for me i feel and that's the main reason why i decided to connect with you and i can say yeah i feel i have gone I reached that next level to a large extent, and that's why the the interesting con the interesting thing about hanging around you or hanging around people if people like you the the pioneers the mavericks the outliers is once you reach the next level what's the next level after that yeah. so, <laughs> so that's something which I always enjoy talking about when when I'm with you. And yeah, I think that was that a good summary? Let's, of, yeah, well, let's of, let's go with that. Like, and thank thank you for that. I'm going to receive that in this moment. I think the the thing that I'd love to explore on behalf of the outliers, pioneers, and mavericks that are listening to this here, uh, there are a few different things. Right. Um, the first one I hear is you you, you alluded to better than normal, and I mm -hmm. think that uh, if we're really going to have this conversation. Better than normal means something. It's more than just a, just a phrase to you. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way of life and more. So do you mind sharing with us a little bit about what better than normal is? Sure. Better than normal, it's the motto essentially through which me and my cousin live our lives. Uh, my cousin being Hitesh Ramchandani, he was born with cerebral palsy at birth. 
And when Hitesh was born, the doctor said that he won't live for more than 24 hours because he was born upside down in his mother's womb and during the delivery the doctors didn't listen to instructions they were supposed to do a c-section but instead of doing a c-section delivery they did the they did a normal delivery and in that process he lost oxygen in his mother's womb for about 90 seconds and during that process of losing oxygen for 90 seconds when he was delivered the worst thing that anybody can tell uh, mother or a father is that your son or your daughter will not survive for more than 24 hours and that's what my aunt and uncle had to hear and i can only imagine what went through them but hitesh is a fighter and it's been 27 years hitesh is still alive but i think the doctor that made those comments he's probably dead right now uh, but I'm not sure about that, but that's a joke, that's a running joke that we have and that Hitesh always makes. But the important thing is Hitesh is doing well and good and better than normal. On top of that, it's also a movement that we've got. Uh, we started about four to five years ago and the mission that we are on in this movement is to inspire 50 million people by 2050, by 2050 to become better than normal, to live the best version of themselves and to reach the next level in their lives, whatever that may be for them. And essentially, we are at about 2 million right now. And Hitesh, has, Hitesh speaks globally. I handle the business side of stuff. Hitesh is the main brand. I'm the brains, as we like to call it, the brand and the brains. But essentially, uh, better than normal is a way of life, I would say, because who wants to be normal, right? Who wants to be average let's all strive to be better than normal yeah. and i think thank you for sharing that story there um and thank you for giving us a chance to see see you and i think in this particular context better than normal i think just really has an important place and you know a lot of the outliers they were people who the normal the majority kind of does things in a certain way and we've we've we're able to be almost the outsiders along the normal and there's this opportunity that we have to be better than normal, as opposed to reverting down to normal, as opposed to just striving for normal or whatever the, the, the majority is in that, that moment there. So just personally, when I, when I hear about, um, when I hear about the mission, when I hear about the movement, uh, that's a, it resonates very strongly with me. Uh, and then on top of that there, this goes back to like the large mission broken down in, 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 in the small areas where it's like 2 million people already. You know, 2 million people already based on uh, 50 million by 2050. So that is, that's something that just, honestly, I look, I look at it, it inspires me. I love, I love how, how the two of you are able to uh, have, have your, your balance there uh, and make something grow specifically from there. So let me ask you here, you've, you mentioned here also just next level, right? Uh, and one of the things I like to look at is like the next level versus the next step. And one of the things about you that, that I always think about is you're someone who has accomplished a lot of the internal things that I think a lot of people look to accomplish or a lot of people leave along their way. Uh, and I'm, when I say people, I mean specifically our, the outliers, pioneers, mavericks like myself. That mm -hmm. is like in order to accomplish, we've kind of pushed a lot of these other elements out of our way. You mm -hmm. mentioned five in particular. Which ones were they? Health. Uh, number one being health. Number two being wealth. Uh, relationships, personal development, and spirituality. Yeah, yeah, and I know that you do on a monthly basis. You're out there and you're you're checking yeah. and you're seeing where where some of those are. And I think what's been what's really interesting about you um, is that you know your numbers, if I, if they're they're typically fairly high, right? Mm -hmm. they're typically fairly high, um, and so that becomes a really fun place to explore. Where it's like when you've there, there's, a, there's an element of, okay, how do I accomplish? And then you're able to get like the external accomplishments done. And mm -hmm. then to be able to go internally and say like the health all the way to spirituality, how am I doing on that? Mm -hmm. And to also get that into a good place. So when you're succeeded on the external accomplishments and you're like succeeding on the internal accomplishments, I'd really love to know like what then comes next for you? Like what what what's the area that... Um, What's the area of possibility for you that that comes once you're like okay actually on both fronts things are actually pretty things are looking good from an external perspective mm -hmm. or to most other people 
but there's still more that I want. So I'd love to like hear a little bit about that here because I think there's a lot of people out there that might be in that situation and it's not necessarily easy to just talk about it. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that, that's a great question, Nemo. And maybe if I could start with my personal definition of success, yeah, which, sure. I, which I live by. And my definition of success is essentially very simple and i hope that it gets this this message is something that i live by every single day it's essentially going to sleep every single night with my heart mind body and soul all at peace with one another so what does going to sleep with my mind with my heart in peace mean heart in peace heart at peace means uh with the relationships that i have the relationships that i have with my loved ones my my colleagues my friends uh and more importantly of course most importantly i dare say is myself the relationship that i have with myself so that's my heart at peace heart mind mind at peace refers to obviously if your money makes the world go round right so if you don't have enough money to uh, feed yourself or your family, your mind will never be at peace, I would say. So that's why money is a very important issue. Money is something which is really important. You have to be rich. If you if you're not rich, then it's going to be very, it's going to be really challenging for you to help anybody else. You've got to help yourself before you can help anybody else. And that's something which I'm very particular about as well. So that's why the mind at peace, it's where the money comes into the picture. Ha heart, mind body body at peace refers to both external and internal health means you need to be fit you need to be in the right frame of mind as well as body and you know you can't just be having six-pack apps but then taking some steroids and you know just not just looking good for the sake of looking good but feeling good as well i think a lot of the the body at peace is about feeling good and of course the soul at peace refers to uh whether am i living my life purpose on a day-to-day -day basis am i providing you know doing something which is bigger than myself that's my soul at peace so essentially maybe if i could just say it one more time which is success is to me is going to sleep every single night with my heart mind body and soul at peace with one another awesome you know and it's there are a few different things that are happening. I, I can feel myself settling more into this conversation and just being like, okay, great. We're, we're taking the things to, to this next level. And outliers, pioneers, mavericks that are listening right now, two questions for you. A, with what he just said, maybe it's the, the five areas that he looks at and he looks at into on a monthly basis, or when it comes to the heart, mind, body, and soul. Uh, how are you feeling in alignment for that for yourself? Take some, take some time right now as we do this to actually search for yourself and just tune in to how you feel on that. So a quick check, right? To see how, how you feel toward any of those things for yourself. I think if I could just uh, interrupt you anymore, I think the reason why I do that is because I'm a very selfish person and I don't like to compromise. And then I, you know, people always talk about sacrificing and compromising, and I'm not a fan of that. And, I'm, and I know we've had many conversations about about that as well. So I want to have it all, and maybe that's why I that's why I do these things which I do, which is keep track of my health, wealth, relationships, personal development, and spirituality. I go to sleep every single night with my heart, mind, body, and soul. It's because I want it all, and I mean we've got. I hope to have a hundred years and I only have a hundred years, so might as well I make the best out of it, right? So let me ask you about that. I love it. I, I like literally the smile is coming on my face as I say this here because yeah, I, I, I don't I like I don't believe in compromise. I know that it exists. I know that it's not that I don't believe it doesn't exist, but I would rather find some some way that is create that creates something something beyond there. And you say like you want it all. You only have a hundred years, you know. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you here, uh, it's really cool hearing this. And I'll be really interested in what gave you like your path to being able to actually embrace this. Like when I hear this from you, this is not a, it, it, it's not just a, a thing that you can just say, you're actually like, Hey Nemo, I need to actually let you know, mm. I want it all. Right. Mm. So take us to, if you can take us to like one of those moments where you realize like, wait a minute for me personally. I don't want to have to compromise. Like sacrifice is not the way that I want to be doing. 50-50 is not enough. You know, like take us to one moment there that helped you really get 
more than just intellectually, but actually like embody the, the fact that you do want it all um, and that you would be willing to be selfish in, in being able to create that. Cause I think that it's, it's something that we, that I struggle with personally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's something that I've heard a lot from other outliers, pioneers and mavericks. I think that's the, the one particular moment it's very difficult for me to zoom into one particular moment, but I would say it's because obviously I, this is something which I recently discovered. I have not always been like that, but I think the reason why I feel this way or the reason why I believe so strongly in the no compromise and, uh, you know, being selfish in that sense is because maybe because I study successful people. And then when I study successful people, it's not that I try to find faults in their success, but somehow their faults seem to pop out at me. Just, you mean, in a, very, a very good example of somebody, in my opinion, who did not live up to, uh, I mean, maybe live up would be the wrong word, but who someone who did not uh, agree with my definition of sex, sex of success. It's obviously Steve Jobs. I think if you watch the movie Jobs and if you know about his life story, you would know that people around him were not his biggest fans. His family is not something that is, you know, uh, they were not that happy with him. His daughter said that he was one of the most meanest guy that there ever was around. So in that in that in that uh, case, when I study more and more successful people, who the people who I admire are people who've got that holistic success that is there. And too many times, uh, what happens is uh, there's lots of compromise and there's lots of uh, sacrifice that has to be made and that's why I would I, I, I want everything to be in harmony I love everything being in being uh, balanced it's not sometimes I don't succeed at it but then the important thing is as long as I'm trying I know that I'm putting in the effort so coming back to the question of any one particular moment I don't think there was anything in particular one moment in particular that made me realize it but it was always many different moments in which I was let's say for example focusing too much on my relationships and then other things compromised. I was focusing too much on my personal development that my health got affected or you know some 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 it's somewhere along the line where I was folk I was going in a little bit too deep in one area that I had to compromise and that's why again self-awareness is something which I uh, I really pride myself in and I was glad that you were able to recognize that when you mentioned in the introduction earlier because I really pride myself in the self-awareness that I have and that also comes from doing these exercises on a monthly basis and realizing when things when things are going out of harmony and out of balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I'm thinking about the harmony and balance right now for myself. Um, and that element of, of being selfish and, and knowing what you want and going for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are a couple of things out of that really like stick out to me, which is a, you found your own metrics in order to kind of look at your life and say, what does success look like for me? Um, and a lot of times I feel like, and well, let me call this out. I feel like that is distinctly different than what most people do, which is what are your definitions of success for me? Uh, and it feels like you have your de your definition. You have the five things you look at e each month. You know, like you know what you literally define it. You're like, <laughs> and I love that you're like, let me tell you what my definition of success is. And I think that's really important. Like, like I want to acknowledge you for that there because this here I find is something that that helps distinguish what it takes to be out on your own. When your definition of success is is, is so clear. And as you're making these choices to be an outlier, to, to do something different, to bring a new vision to life that that others haven't, to go and say with confidence and with um, with full knowledge that like by 2050 we're going to have 50 million people on this platform. You know, I'm living to 100. You know, it, those definitions of success there come into play. And so, I think I think what I'll be curious about right now, I'll love to I'll love to shift a little bit here and 
because I feel we can keep going back and we can pull out different elements of your story. And I strongly encourage anyone that's that's watching or listening to this to go on, check out your platform, uh, better than normal. See see a lot of the other things that are that are associated with that because, uh, quite frankly, there's there's just a lot to learn through that process uh, and through and there's a lot to be inspired and to, and to really shape up to. I was wearing the better than normal T-shirt the other day when I went to the gym. I'm like, I went to the gym. I'm did feeling you, it. Did, did, did you do more reps uh, than you usually well, would? I, oh, definitely. Well, the thing is, every time I wear that shirt, I have to do push-ups. It's like it's like, <laughs> it's like like one and the other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got caught on stage and they're like, do some push-ups. I'm like, I was not anticipating this, but let's do it. Um, so let's let's... Let's do this here. Let's let's make sure we share all that out there. Um, I know. I, I think there's there's so much that people will get about mm -hmm. who you are and how you show up in, uh, in in that business and in the world through right. that. Um, and I'd love to go to a definition of success for you today, mm -hmm. and really just shift to a place of just like you've been giving us a lot about your story mm -hmm. uh, and how you see the world, and it's part of what brought us to this this place mm -hmm. here. Um, I'd love to take some time and really just focus on you for a little bit here. Um, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to shift my chair a little bit here because I want to be able to look at you and I'll be mm -hmm. looking out at anyone else that's watching too, but I'm, I want to be with you mm -hmm. here. And if I'm not looking at you for a while, uh, just know that I'm doing it in order to, to really be of service in this current moment. Mm -hmm. So Vicky, you and I, we've coached together. We've had, we've had some conversations. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to allow us to get to a space that, that, that would work for us fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd love to, take us to a place right now where you can get served in this moment. You've served everyone else up until this point. And, and, the, and the idea of just being selfish, mm -hmm. right? Um, and knowing the things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. I'll have to create some space for us to just spend some time, focus on what's important to you and what, what, what would help you move forward. So with that here, how can I best serve you in this conversation? I think uh, one thing that's on my mind recently, because I just proposed to my fiance, as, as you would know, yes. and then the the marriage is coming up, the planning for the marriage is coming up, and then I'm also getting a new place for myself, for you know, moving moving out of the house, and also work is going on. So essentially, again, a lot of times I like to bring myself back to the balance and the harmony but sometimes as much as I would want to I'm still not able to get a good uh, grasp on it so I'm just figuring out at this point of time how do I or what is there any priority matrix that should be used or anything that you feel will be able to make me you know focus on stuff a little bit better and also sometimes there are, there are things which I know I should be doing, but then I don't end up doing. And that's something which also uh, annoys me at myself because knowing the high achiever that I am, I should be doing so many things such a very, a very real example is uh, my health. I know I should be going to the gym and working out more often, but I'm not. And I think that's something which is, uh, then, then I try to find the quick fixes that are there. So the different types of diets and the different types of uh, fats that actually exist. But then my dad, me and my dad were having a conversation and he gave me a very simple uh, rule. I mean, my dad is relatively uh, slim. He's not. He's not overweight. He just. He's. So he, he's. He's in good shape for a 53 year old. He said, "All you got to do." And I told that the the reason why it came up was I said, "Okay, from next month I'm going on this diet. I can only eat a certain type of of food and certain, and I can't eat fruits at night because my family has a habit of you know grapes, apples, all all of that at night as as part of a supper that that we have." So then he was saying, "Why do you need to go to such uh, extent? All you got to do is just wake up." every single day and go for a run and you do that consistently for the next four months I guarantee you that you will be back in the shape that you want and at first I was like oh he doesn't understand that in order to do you know in order to get results quick you got to follow this you got to follow this workout or that workout I don't but then when I thought about it I was like it makes uh, perfect sense all I got to do is just go because I live in this place called Woodland Circle and it's literally a circle and you can you can just run around the the circle two times that's about four to five kilometers and I was thinking why not I just do that so I'm just wondering between choosing which is better is should I should I do my rounds because it might take a little bit longer 
or shall I follow the total transformation seven minutes workout, which you can find on YouTube and makes life a lot, a lot easier okay. for a lot easier for me. So that's and so that's what I'm actually uh, deciding on at this point of time. I hope that makes sense. It does in uh, in, in certain areas. Um, and as you were saying this, the question that came to mind for me was just to go back to what you said about you live into a hundred, right? There is. In this current time frame, it seems like, am I choosing the seven minute workout mm. or am I like going to invest longer so that mm. over the next four months, it gets me to where I am. Right. Mm. And when I think about that in, in the short period of time, it's like, oh, wow, that seems like a really like, it seems like a really major decision I have to choose. Right? Mm. And then when I give it the perspective and just, I'm just thinking about you in particular, mm. how big goals, small steps, so mm -hmm. forth. Um, when it comes to like your hundred year vision of mm -hmm. yourself, right? If there's either, if there was one of them that turned into a practice that went even beyond what you did in the short term right now, mm -hmm. which one of those practices would you see giving you more of the life that you would want or helping you be more successful and live into the life that you want at age 100? I think it would be more of the workout or especially or doing something along the line of sports and you know keeping healthy through sports because I'm not a big fan of running it's not something which I've I mean I'm good I'm a good runner but you know sometimes you can be good at something but not enjoy I, I was it. a good actuary <laughs> you know and now we're having this conversation so yes I get it it's like it's like yes you are you are you're you're multi capable right yeah. you can do a lot of different things so, but yeah. then in those moments I'm not uh, I don't enjoy myself, but then I do. When I do go for those, you know, high intensity workouts and you know, do stuff like that because that. So, if you were coming back to the question of which would, uh, which would serve me more, I think it would be the workouts rather than the runs. Yeah, okay. and I think like there's no right answer in this mm -hmm. one here, but I think that the the big part comes down to what's gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. Your father has figured out his thing yeah. and it's great and he's giving you more information. Now mm -hmm. there's a little bit of being able to look look into what's gonna work for you. Um, and you mentioned, you, so you, I heard high intensity workouts, mm -hmm. things that like sports and things like that. Yeah. There. Like, can you create time in, in your life now at, you just hit the, the milestone of 30. It's come up uh, mm -hmm. in, in this conversation here, mm -hmm. you know, for the next 70 years. Yeah. Right? Let's, let's look at this here, right? For the next 70 years, like, can you, can you see yourself feeling fulfilled? Like in terms of your five different buckets, could you see those areas being fulfilled in a meaningful way through these kinds of workouts or through these kinds of team, team experiences? Like for me in this conversation, I can, I can answer your question and say, mm -hmm. yes, prioritize X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. but I'm not living your life. Mm -hmm. And you have 70 more years that you have you have ahead of you. And if you can fi start figuring out now some of what would make each and every second of those 70 years that much more meaningful for you, mm -hmm. I think that would be a good place there. So check in with yourself really quickly. If you had to give yourself an answer, knowing that you can change it afterwards, it's totally mm -hmm. fine. What would what would be the, the choice that you would say, like, yeah, honestly, if, if this was if I continued with this or a variation of this for as long as until I needed to change, mm -hmm. I would be happy and I would, and it would feel like I was maximizing my time right now. What, what, what would it be? And it may be neither of the things that you, none of the things that you've mentioned so far. Mm -hmm. I think it would def because I'm a very, um, I live a very, oh, I like the utilitarian model of happiness. And the thing which I wouldn't want to see myself doing is at the age of 98, going for a run around Woodland Circle, assuming I'm still <laughs> living there, which I won't be. But we can so, call it so, Space Circle, whatever it is. So, yeah. So thinking of that, because you, you put it very nicely, I've got 70 more years. So at, But at 98, I do see myself maybe in a tennis court because that's something which I enjoy. And then trying to do some volleys and serving tennis yeah. balls and stuff like that. So thinking about that gives me more, or maybe picking up a new spot i don't know what new spot that might be yeah. <laughs> at that at that age so and having fun in that process because games and sports and competitive competitiveness is something which i which i enjoy so for myself it will be more on on, on doing the sports based kind of workouts yeah. more of more yeah that, that that kind of stuff yeah yeah and like i i feel it, it feels it feels fun when you describe it to me mm. um let me put it this way it feels fun 
when you describe it to me. If I was describing it to myself, I'm like, I don't know if it would be the right thing, but it feels like something when you say that it's like, okay, yeah, this, this could actually continue on for you mm-hmm. here. So I would, so I would spend some time spend like searching with that. And for me, the area becomes, the area that becomes fun is to be able to consistently create yourself in terms of whatever sport is the right sport for you then. So mm-hmm. if it's tennis now, you want to go play it. Great. If it's squash, go play it. Great. You know, soccer and whatever it is, or yeah. football. Um, but to be able to be that kind of athlete and to be in like competitive, like sports games all the way into your 98, like that to me is something that that's a decision that, that happens now. Mm-hmm. And over the next 70 years, you're also building your way towards that. It makes sense. I like I, I like that I like the sounds of it because it's something which I've always enjoyed doing, and it's something which is fun. And fun is a very important value. I think you would know we've spoken about this in the past as well. Because I feel because if I'm going to be enjoying every se- every single second that I'm going to be here till hundred, then I wouldn't want to be doing it. Even you know I, I want to be have I want to be having fun in that in that process. So definitely that's something. So that. That's something which I would want to, you know, take into account when I'm making decisions like this, like which is the best uh, workout or what, you know, what what is the next uh, diet to take or stuff or stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do I have your permission to ask you a question that's a little bit deeper? Sure. Um, and you can choose to answer it or not answer it. It's mm-hmm. fine. I can have lots of questions. Okay. Right? I'm just going to follow what I'm curious about. Right. Mm-hmm. So I know that you recently came to a milestone year. We're talking every second. We're talking the fact that you're 30 now. We're looking at 100. We have the 70 years in between, mm-hmm. right? For where you are right now, what scares you the most? For where I am right now, yeah. what scares me the most is essentially not being able to do it. In fact, I would. I wanted to. My initial gut feeling reaction was actually death, but then I realized that if I were to die yesterday, I would have been very happy with my with with the results that I've gotten so far. But then, so the answer to that question would be not death, but <laughs> any kind of illness or any kind of disability that puts me in a state where I'm not able to go to sleep with my heart, mind, body and soul at peace with one another or not being able to compute that, you know, the five things which we which we spoke about earlier as well. So I wouldn't say the thing that scares me the most is death, but it will be something close to death. Yeah, can we, Just what, a level below death yeah. where you are alive, but then you feel dead. So let's explore that because like, there are, is that all right with you? Yeah. Um, that last statement, a place like place where you're alive but you feel dead Mm -hmm. right um i'm gonna think about that metaphorically right and there are times where they're i'm technically doing things and like i'm alive but i'm like i'm it's dead to me i'm like dead inside it doesn't bring me and there's no life Mm -hmm. that's in it right is there any area in your life right now that where you might be feeling that sensation where it's like it's happening it's good Mm-hmm. You know, but like, is it bringing me, is it, do I feel truly alive in it? Mm-hmm. You know, or am I, or am I living right now in this moment kind of as though it is, that I am dead in that mm-hmm. particular area? Is there something that comes to mind there? Nope. Okay. No area as of now. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <sighs> I'm as alive as I would want it to be. I'm, I'm loving that. So let's so let's go on the other side then, right? Let's let's play here. We have a few more minutes before we wrap up this year, but um, one of the things that and it's a, this is an edge for me. This is an edge for me because there was a time where I could work to get people up to a certain <laughs> like like get to the point where you can feel this way, right? And then the question is, okay, great. Now I'm living here. What comes next, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to hear for you, like right now, with what's going on. Think about something that, that you're looking to create in the world. It could be whatever period of time that make that makes sense for you. Yeah. Um, but let's let's. I would love for you to challenge me mm-hmm. with something that like you're looking to create in the world, or that you're looking to have in the world, or you're looking to be in the world mm-hmm. that right now feels impossible to you. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, something that you would love that you're like. Look, I, most other people when I talk through this year, that's not really making sense. I would appreciate the challenge. Of of being able to to work through something that would be that's on your mind right now. I think a lot of it might have to do with 
the day to day decision making mm-hmm. and because i'm a very practical guy I, i mean i do use my emotions i do tutin but i would say i'm a more practical than than emotional person my fiance likes to say is that i've got no feelings but i would put it in a way that i'm a very equanimous guy where i don't believe in being positive i don't believe in being negative i believe in being neutral but sometimes being in that state also does not allow me to achieve the maximum output or outcome that I that I would that I would like to be mm-hmm. because whenever there's a, either a burning desire or a fear like what you mentioned just now that's something which usually drives action so i'm i'm in a good place and i'm just wondering on a day to day basis how can i make things to the next level i think yeah. with me it's always about going going to the next level and sometimes uh it might be the blind spots because uh sometimes i feel at the game at the level which i'm playing or the reason why i enjoy coaching sessions with you like this and like what we've had previously is because sometimes i don't know what i don't know and having somebody there to bring that to light is something which i appreciate and i and i acknowledge and that comes down you know it it brings me to a to a different level of self awareness so maybe that's something which i'm facing right now and i have to acknowledge and understand that part as well that there's some things which i don't know so i don't know what i don't know so let's say if i was in such a situation then what do i do next yep so let's look at this here i'm choosing right now in this conversation right now to play differently mm-hmm. for me right i'm choosing to play with you're going to notice a more higher energy um more rapid fire questions mm-hmm. and let's just let's just see where we go we might end up here and be like look we're great mm-hmm. and i and i i am comfortable with that right mm-hmm. i don't ever need to have it like on in a conversation where they'll be like wow mind blown boom mm-hmm. or like blind spot totally seen like it happens and it happens often but mm-hmm. that's not what i'm here for mm-hmm. i'm here to really make sure that that you that you get served so with that there there were there were a few things that were kind of interesting to me and i just want to just like poke around and just mm-hmm. play. Is that cool? Sure. All right, cool. Uh neutral. Um help me see that there because what I heard from you is like you're like I'm not going to be positive. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be negative. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be neutral, right? In what way? So I'm going to compare that here mm-hmm. to a, an approach that I choose to take, which is that I I actually choose the opposite. Like mm-hmm. I'll choose either positive or negative. No, is that true? Mm-hmm. I'm just checking myself in here. <laughs> I think I choose the spectrum. Mm-hmm. right where it's like all right from the negative all the way to the positive and if you really know me i'm pr- probably neutral to positive mm-hmm. right um from the standpoint of getting a 360 degree experience mm-hmm. so if everything comes in and it's just neutral mm-hmm. um i'm really curious actually in this moment because since i choose some of the things a little bit differently mm-hmm. i'm really curious what might be missing if you chose to be it, by by leaving out the that positive end for you mm mm-hmm. I think a lot of times is not really like leaving leaving it out yeah. but more not not leaving it out but then living in it I think that's something okay. tell me more being neutral is when I'm living in it when I and when I say living in it what I mean is seeing things as they actually are yeah. without any prior judgment or attachment to it and things happen all the time good things happen all the time and then instead of giving myself credit for it uh although i do give credit myself credit for it because i am better than normal right after all but then instead of giving myself uh too much credit for it i like to you know keep it keep it neutral and when so that's when good things happen so uh because tony robbins i heard he he once said that we underestimate what we can we overestimate what we can do in one year but we underestimate what we can do in 5 years so uh coming back similar to that when good things happen i don't like to give myself too much credit for it although because i mean i know i'm good but then when bad things happen i also know that it is not because when you're at the bottom then the only place you can go is up yep. so that's why i don't like to uh put too much attention on it as well because i know good and bad it's just to the you know the yin and the yang that's just two spectrum of of the same of you know the same cause you yeah yeah I I can feel myself I'm like he knows this he's good. Uh so <laughs> so we're moving on. Uh what excites you? Like what excites you right now? 
the getting getting married in the, the the things which i'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis which is looking for a house and the kind of coaching that i'm doing the work that i'm doing uh planning for the marriage looking for a videographer searching through five videographers and seeing which is the best videographer so that uh, me and my fiance were just joking if you're going to be spending so much money on a videographer you better be looking at this video every single day yeah, yeah. so and right. <laughs> Yeah. So having those kind of conversations and, and laughing. So what excites me is yeah. finding out or um, creating more moments where I can have fun. Yeah. And then these moments, they are fun. Awesome. Yeah. They're stressful, but they're fun. <laughs> nice. Nice. And what's the next, like, if there was, if you were going to be surprised, mm -hmm. right? And look, there's, there's an element of this that would, that, that takes away because we're already thinking about it right here. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to be surprised with something, um, in a positive way, right? Uh, where you're like, this is fun. This is a moment. There's a moment of fun that, you know, right now with all the day to day decisions that I had to make and all the day things that are happening on the day to day, like I just didn't really see being able to have as part of my life right now. What would you, what would you love for that surprise to be? If someone was just going to just show up with, with a surprise in your world, or you had a chance to have a surprise experience of some, some sort, it could be in your relationships. It could be in your life. It could be in your business. It could be in what, whatever, whatever way, but like, you're just going to be like, wow. I didn't have to even work towards this. It just came to me. What would you love to be surprised by? I think that's a very interesting question to ask a practical guy like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and but I like surprises and I refuse to answer that question because of the fact that it's a surprise. Okay. And if I knew that answer to that question, then I somehow feel that the universe will not grant me that, 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 that surprise. You. It's like the wish, you know, tell me what you're wishing for. And yeah. if I tell you that wish somehow, for some weird reason, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, but everything else close to that happens. So, uh, so I hope you don't mind, but I, I don't mind. I don't mind. This is this like, like, like I said, this is, this is your, this is your time now. Like, what comes up for me so like i'm going to share with you given our, in our history um there's an element that that express that feels a bit of sadness mm -hmm. and i'll explain why because it's going to seem really it's like why sadness like mm -hmm. everything else is going there um i once did a, a youth leadership event it was uh for a, a group that i volunteer with it was their world uh, leadership congress and there was someone in there that was on the operations team Right. And she was incredibly practical. And she, I went to her at the end of the week. It was my first time going. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went to her at the end of the week and I was like, wow, like this week was perfect. It looked like everything that you kind of like had in place, all the contingency plans, all the contingency mm -hmm. plans, all the contingency plans, all that stuff, everything that you wanted to have happen worked out. Like, how do you feel? And I will never forget this here. Like, she just looked at me and she's like, I feel pretty good. You know, I'm like, is th that's it. She's like, yeah, everything that we planned, hmm. we executed. <laughs> and so everything happened exactly as I expected. Hmm. And so I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I remember that, like, I haven't forgotten. It's been two years since it happened. And I just felt such this, this wave mm -hmm. of sadness, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, hold on. You've literally done everything that you said that you set out to do. And the best that you can get is just like a little bit better than neutral. Hmm. And so in this moment, I'm like, I'm present to that, mm -hmm. right? It does, I'm not trying to change anything about it. You don't need to be like, I just want to make sure I'm calling out like I'm present to that. And I think, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of other things there. Like I'm feeling, I'm like, I'm happy for you as well. Mm -hmm. the, the emotion that I didn't expect to feel and the one that like feels to be like taking up more space than mm -hmm. I would expect it to. Uh, is that feeling of sadness? See, it, yeah. it, some, something like this has happened to me previously as well. And this was about a decade ago at uh, when I was 21. And that was the first time as a financial consultant, I got a fully sponsored trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I had never been to, I had never been out of Asia before at that point, at that point of time in my life. And it was my first trip out of Asia and out of all places in the world, I go to Hawaii and I'm a beach person. But then as soon as I landed there, somehow it did not feel as exciting or as fun as it should, as it should have been for whatever, for whatever weird reason it felt that way. So when, when, when you were sharing that story, that's the moment that came to light, to light for myself that because I had worked so hard for that particular trip, but then when I was there, it was like, is this all 
that there is. I'm not saying that I was not uh, enjoying myself. Yeah, yeah it's Hawaii. Because, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. because yeah. it's Hawaii. Uh, but then is that is that all there is? And sometimes that's why I wonder if it's the, you know, when whenever planning for a holiday, it's always the excitement leading up to something when something doesn't hit the climax. And maybe, uh, so that's why when, when you share that story, that's one uh, moment that came to my mind, like what you said about the feeling of sadness. To some extent, I felt the happy, like how you are feeling happy yeah. for me as, as well. But I felt a little bit of sadness in the in, in Hawaii. For some reason, yeah. I found a way to make myself sad because I'm wondering, okay, this is not as ecstatic or as high as I would have liked myself to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I, I totally get it. And like, I, I would be... I would be remiss if I didn't bring it out myself. Like, I a I've had those moments, and now like I've actually gone through a lot of work to get my like my nervous system to stop triggering left mm. and right. And honestly, I'm bored more times than like than I would like to put out there. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, this would have excited me beforehand, but like this is just normal now. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's that next thing? What's that? What's that part that like? Let's puts me back on my head. What's that part that like has a new level of growth for me or something mm-hmm. like that? Um, and I just, I just find myself really curious because like, like you got it. Like, like mm-hmm. every, like all this stuff is like what you've set your mind to is mm-hmm. going to happen. Yeah. And so I think, I think I'm just like curious here as we start wrapping up in our conversation, I'm curious around where is a space for surprise for you? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and with that, that, that element of really, where's, where's the space for the gifts that the surprises give Mm -hmm. for you to be able to really embrace and be able to have that when it comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. I think when, when you mentioned that coming back to how we got to know you actually, it was a surprise getting to know you. And that was not something which I was, uh, looking for or finding a coach or finding a mentor. And when Jared came to me and that, that came as a surprise that that was something which, 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 which I enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when, when you mentioned that about where's the space, I'm wondering, I'm just trying to look back and try to recall what state of mind was I in or what was going on at that, at that point of time when I got the surprise. Yeah. (laughs) Which was meeting you. Yeah. No, I'll take that. I'll take that. Like. (laughs) Um, and it's something that I'm going to be thinking through here, um, just from the, just from the areas of you give so much, Hmm. you know, and you do so much for yourself and and for others, you know? And I think part of the reason why, when you say like you're like yourself is I also know you to be a huge giver. So it's like the more that you can take care of yourself, the more that everyone else gets so much more. It's not just coming into you, but you have taken care of yourself enough to give multiples back to all those around you. Right. And so I am like, like as the coach in this moment, I am like being selfish on your behalf. I'm like, be more selfish, mm-hmm. like neutral, like, I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, I yeah. get it. And like, I would love to hear about like, like the next time we talk, like mm-hmm. something that's just like, like beyond, beyond. And I know like I, I, we've been sending messages back and forth. I know that there's like beyond neutral when it came to like, you know, getting, getting engaged and like, mm-hmm. and all that stuff there. So there are those elements yeah. in there. I'm not, I'm not yeah. leaving that out there. Yep. Um, and as someone who's also experienced like a level of like, okay, I'm working toward being neutral mm-hmm. and then living in the neutral zone. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in what like some of those higher frequencies would be like for you, mm-hmm. for you to keep the neutral and be able to also experience more of more of the other elements of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, and like, and like, like you said, we can't, we can't engineer the surprise. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be, <laughs> otherwise it'll be legal. So way Hawaii, you know? Yeah. Um, but would you, would you accept an invitation to, I don't know, I don't know how to phrase this the right way. It's not to being open to surprises. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, it's just, it's just that like that, that, that area of coincidence, mm-hmm. you know, synchronicity. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Would that would that be something that you'd be open to yeah. a little bit more in this in this? Let's say the next week here. I would. I think. I think. I have a feeling that in next week. Yeah, I think it would just be a really fun game to play with. It will be for sure. Synchronicity. Okay, I love it. All right, cool. Um, let's do this here. I'm feeling that this conversation is a good place for it to come to a conclusion, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
I want to thank you. I'm now going to bring my attention back over here. I'm going to look at the camera. I look at everyone over here. And what I want to do as we wrap up all together, Vicky, is to give you a chance to share a little bit more about like what's going on in your life. If people wanted to uh, to stay in contact with mm -hmm. you, if people wanted to to explore more of what uh, uh, to find out more about you and the things you're doing, mm -hmm. how can they go about doing that? I think the best place to reach out to me is through the movement of Better Than Normal because uh, I'm very active in it. And the best place to find out more about Better Than Normal and our mission to inspire 50 million people by 2050 is on Facebook. So you can like our Facebook page and that's called Better Than Normal. And you can also uh, search on YouTube for Better Than Normal or you can also search for Hitesh R. And if you, I think there's a, if, if you guys like to go to a website, maybe I could, uh, you can check out www.hiteshr.com and then you can check out the next events that me and Hitesh are speaking to where we are traveling to because we do lots of corporate events all around the world. And essentially that's where we update almost everything. So Facebook, uh, Better Than Normal, YouTube Better Than Normal, uh, or Hitesh R, whichever one uh, works for you, and uh, Hitesh R.com as well. And anytime, and just let me know that you tuned in or you listened to this podcast, and I'm sure that we can have another conversation going. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to thank you for coming in and just being so open all throughout this conversation. Thank you for letting us play here. Um, thank you for giving me a chance to bring to experience more like I like there's there's a lot of elements where I feel like depth and seriousness and and holding space and, and joy and like every once in a while like that feeling of sadness is able to come in I'm like this is really it reminds me that I'm alive so I mm -hmm. want to thank you for that um I also want to thank you for being someone who's chosen to live a better than normal life who's chosen not to revert down to the to the, the mean but instead stand for something and stand stand brightly for for others to be able to also have as a beacon and to go forward from there with this here we'll end this conversation uh and i'm looking forward to seeing you and the other outliers pioneers and mavericks over in the oasis Great. we'll talk soon thank you nemo Thanks. see you guys bye bye Hey, Oniyama here. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and then go ahead and leave one of your insights from today's video in the comments below. If you're looking to take this deeper, you can go and watch another video, or you can go to niyama.com slash tribe to get exclusive invitation to our tribe member only events. I'll see you soon.